Hello and welcome to The Conversation. My name is Shannon Taylor and I am the Executive Director and with me is a very special guest, expert in the field of art of all types, you'll hear from him very shortly, Martin Roberts. We also have guests in the studio, not on camera because they're just too plain shy. They come from California, very unlike California. And uh, their names are uh, Chris and Dan and Fabian. There's not a Jew in the room. This is the most multicultural non-Jewish event we've produced here since we had the chef and the reverend. And uh, I, I won't comment on how shy they are. I tried every which way to bring them on, but they just won't join us. They're here with Martin Roberts Galleries, and uh, Martin Roberts happened to have pioneered a, sp a particular type of art. Now, I will not go into that art in too much detail because I'm not the artist. He'll go into that. But suffice it to say that I'm not the only photographer in the room. There's somebody who actually knows how to take a good picture. And Martin also knows about cameras. He even was exhibited in the Leica Gallery. And we were privileged to see that exhibit and, and uh, to see that entire room of that exhibit at the Leica Gallery. He takes black and white expert photographs around the world in the most romantic places in the co coasts of France and Italy all along the Mediterranean while I'm in the museum he's in the gardens and on the steps and on the rocks and bothering everybody to show them their private homes and of course I didn't quite believe that they would actually open up their homes to his uh, photography and so he, he came with me on a jaunt through Little Italy, stopped traffic in the middle of the street, held up uh, all, all of, uh, of Little Italy while he found an Indian wooden statue in front of a tobacco shop that he found was quite curious and persuaded the owner who could throw all of us through a brick wall to pose with the Indian statue in front of the store at, at, uh, at no cost to the owner, I might add, and uh, he received no revenue for that whatsoever, and a whole series of wonderful artwork was then exhibited at the Javits Center in the past. And now there is another art expo of over 2,400 artists from over 60 countries around the world with an additional, I don't know how many thousand square feet, because now they're not sharing it with with the, what I like, the, the beauty pageant uh, exhibition on the top floor, they now have opened it up to art and framing. And of course, you'll find uh, Martin Roberts' works inside, but in this studio is Martin Roberts himself, straight from Laguna Beach, where he runs the annual Sawdust Festival, and where I was recently visiting with Erwin Corey. And I had told you about that visit on a prior show, where we went for a memorial for uh, Jackie Bright, whose father's a producer of Friends. And Martin was our uh, host at Laguna Beach, a very kind uh, soul he was to take care of both me and Irwin. On a lighter note, this is the anniversary of the World Trade Center bombing, uh, the first bombing in 93. It is also the 10th anniversary of the Empire State uh, tragedy and February 18th, 97, when uh, an individual came and shot up some 20 people, uh, more uh, Muslim terrorism, and it follows in the wake of all the years of terrorism we've experienced. I will be on WOR radio tonight at midnight, the Joey Reynolds show, and uh, at some point on Fox News this week, talking about how I was among the very few that correctly analyzed that these were Islamic terrorist messages and not some poor people depressed on Prozac who had lost money in business. Now we get back to our regular programming because this is a program that doesn't deal with terrorism, it deals with art, it deals with education, it deals with conversation, and it deals with the experts in all fields, and now Martin Roberts. Well, good evening. It's nice to be with you. Thanks for the invitation, Shannon. Martin, you are here for the Art Expo, is that correct? That's correct. It's the largest art show in the United States, and it's held at Jacob Javits Center starting Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it has hundreds of exhibitors and artists. It pulls the art business as well as the creativity of art together 
under one roof and it's ex it's an extraordinary exhibition which in fact is open to the public um, I believe on the weekends the the uh, public uh, comes in and it is a, a world-class event of every kind both unknown artists and known artists exhibit and we've uh, done the show for a number of years and are quite uh, proud to be part of it now correct me if I'm wrong I'm reading from uh, the um the internet. The trade attendees include gallery owners, art consultants, architects, interior designers, art specifiers, retailers. Nearly 50,000 come every year, over 600 exhibits. Uh, am, am I leaving something out? Does it really reach this scope? How was I ever able to see it in the past? Well, it's really international. I mean, this is not just a domestic uh, show. It pulls people from all over the world. Uh, many artists uh, will, will go out for the first airing and do a presentation of their work and hope that the gallery owners around the world will come in, see their work, that a publisher will pick them up, uh, publish their work, etc. It's really quite an exciting event and uh, every year uh, it's really fun to be part of it. We are going to be represented in a booth that's run through Hewlett Packard with the uh, the uh, company name is Squirt Printing. You can see my work there. And I'd like to add that if you find anything we're going to be talking about of interest, you can go on to our website, which is bigtimeart.com. You can see a complete uh, listing of the work. What does Hewlett Packard do? Well, Hewlett Packard represents a particularly striking aspect of the art business currently which is the art of fine art clay, which is a very uh, beautiful way to reproduce two-dimensional art on canvas and on paper. Uh, unlike prints, uh, lithographs, uh, 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 machine lithographs of the past, these prints are virtually fade resistant and it's a way for an artist to put their work into uh, mass production, both limited and unlimited, but put them out there in a very quality manner. You get along with all the other artists. Is it a cutthroat competition like every other field, whether it's a judiciary, or on the surface everybody gets along and then they're running side by side behind the scene, or, or uh, you come in and everybody is slapping each other on the back and then running to grab a buyer away from the next person. Tell, tell me what it's really like. I know you have you have galleries in the Bellagio and the Venetian, and 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 you you are out in the Lugano Beach for I don't know how long. And, Laguna and Beach. Laguna. I, my, I always get that wrong. What do I know from California? Right. Tell, tell me the, the nuts and bolts of the art world. Well, uh, the business uh, uh, of art uh, is one in which there's a blend between the artist individual motivation for what they do. A, a great number of people, of course, in the business are always overlooking uh, what the trends are, looking over their shoulder to see what someone else is doing to influence what they do. But of course, a portion of the art business is in fact trend, there's no doubt. It goes from one year to another, whether it would be uh, contemporary for a few years, a collage of shapes and colors on, on, a, uh, on a, um, a canvas, or if you're talking super realism, watercolor, um, uh, you're talking um, oil, you're talking drawing, things do tend to go. However, there is a, for example, if you go into your grandmother's house, if you have a grandmother, chances are you're going to see certain things on the wall that she had and that people have on their wall that have been popular for decades. This would represent the bulk of the, of the art business. Things that people feel comfortable with, things that last year in and year out and do not go out of trend and style. This is an area that interests myself tremendously uh, and also the artists that I have the great fortune of working with. I work with a very accomplished artist by the name of Dan Witte who we have pioneered a art form, which I guess is the reason that uh, you've invited me here. I'm going to hold a magazine up in front of my face and show you a glimpse of what our work is. This is an example of one why, of. Why, why don't you give it to me and I'll hold it right. out of my camera? 
Now this is an example of the work which we do. And basically what my work is, is a black and white photograph, which has been turned in essence into a fine art painting. This technique is not new, it's just new in the way that we brought it to the market and brought our art form forward. You can remember the early photographs that you've seen in, in family albums that were black and white portraits of the grandmother or someone in the family. They would do the hair, or the skin, and tint. Before they had color film, they, everything black and white was hand tinted. That interested me as a boy tremendously. My father was a, a very accomplished photographer and I was always a frustrated painter. So I felt like I wanted to blend those two art forms together and I would guess what we do which is significantly different than you would think of as a tinted photograph is that when we uh, first started doing a series some decades ago on Europe we did the the full scenic black and white scenes and then turned those into an essence of fine art painting they're layered with oils acrylics and watercolor over the photograph so they are very three-dimensional now we've been fortunate in the arts because this is a genre which in fact is very highly popular and has been popular European subjects because of the cultural uh, aspect of our country having a lot of the roots uh, uh, in that area uh, has been a very popular and, and something very dear to people. So we now have a series which uh, ex is extensively deals in the architecture of both France, Italy, uh, in Switzerland most recently. We are constantly traveling. We make a, a sojourn uh, every year and have done this for decades in which we go out and scour literally it's, uh, the, the hills. I use antique maps, some maps that go back into the uh, 1700s, 1600s, we'll plot the ancient villages that are not necessarily near current roadways to find villages that in many cases tourists have never been to, even in Italy, Switzerland, and France. Those are brought into our laboratory in Laguna Beach, California, which is the base of our home um, gallery. And we do the black and white master photographs and then set out to hand paint them painting in the flowers and the foliage cascading off of the window sills and the, the um, reflections of the Venice canals. We have a new series which is going to be the flowered villages of Switzerland, which is going to be exquisite. Well, let, let me ask you this, because it caught me aback. I used to think that when you painted in the colors, you were painting in the actual colors of, of the actual scene as it existed. Then I found out that you are becoming much more of an impressionist, that you are painting in a much more romanticized view. Uh, it may be a beautiful colored scene as, as it was, but you are even embellishing upon, upon that. That is really the artistic uh, perspective. Be besides the photographic expertise, the geographic expertise, the geologic expertise, the hiking and the, and the mapping and so on and so forth, and the intrusion upon privacy that you managed to have mastered throughout all of this. Believe me, I've been chased off more than one uh, photograph. And God knows what poor Mr. Witty has gone through but well, as, as you lead them on uh, these merry chases. I, if you'd like, I'll tell you a little vignette uh, of a, uh, a subject that we were attempting to get in, in Italy. And uh, I felt that it was a magnificent piece that if I should be able to photograph it in black and white, it would be one of the finest things I ever did. We were out in the country and up a mountain, ran across a little village. And further we went into the forest, we found a, a, a building that had the windows literally falling off with the stacked brick, every aspect that brings to bear a piece. And yes, I do paint in the gardens where sometimes they never existed. Basically, I'm the gardener that I wish the, the house had naturally. I'm the gardener that you wish in your dreams your uh, antique house would look like. I can bring that to bear. So 
in answer to your question, very much the artistic aspect and the change comes in it, the balance of the color, etc. But we were at this point and we got chased out of this property at uh, the end of a, of a uh, shotgun. But that's very rare. Most people are very hospital and uh, hospitable and very uh, excited to uh, have a piece that, uh, from their home that they think uh, that we believe is worthy of a piece of art. Naturally, we take literature and some uh, postcards with us to show them what we're doing. I know that you have a stationary line. You have all size of, of paintings. They've created galleries for you, uh, multiple gar galleries in Las Vegas. And, and your studio is just something to admire. And you're a person uh, who works at a certain pace. You're, I've never seen you uh, pressed for time. I've never seen you harried. You take the most exquisite uh, care with everything you do. And I know, I've heard this, this, uh, this fable that behind every picture there's a story. Is there a general story behind each line of work that you have? Well, one of the most uh, famous pieces for us is a piece called Cat in the Medieval Window. And I can remember some years ago when we were in Italy, Dan, my partner, and myself, I've worked with Dan since we were in high school. Uh, incidentally, he's uh, married to a beautiful French uh, woman by the name of Fabian. And I say, uh, although I know she's in the studio, I don't want her to get mad, I say that we really know France better than she does, and she was born there. But she doesn't mind. It is true that a lot of people that were born in uh, France, are they stay within an area for a great amount of their life. And although they'll vacation in certain areas like we would in the United States, they don't necessarily go on an, uh, a driven adventure such as we do into every little nook and cranny of the country. So sometimes Fabian will join us, and it's a pleasure seeing her discover her own country like, like we are. But I will tell you, the cat in the medieval window is one that's one of my favorites. We were in Italy, and when we went into the village above Monaco called La Trubi, uh, we found a wall that was so spectacular uh, with the uh, stacked rock and the uh, the gardens, cascading gardens, I knew it was going to be a piece of a lifetime. But the sun never came out. And so when we got back to the United States, I said to Dan and my father, who uh, my home taught uh, a teacher uh, since I was just a youngster, I said, look, next year we're going to go back at this time of year in May and we're going to shoot that image. And they both said, right, like we're going to spend the money for that one image. Well, the next year we were there. And for the three days we were there, the sun never came out. And I won't shoot a, photo, a photograph unless the sun's perfect, because I won't kid myself. There's a lot of photographers that will shoot hundreds of images at any given moment with the rapid winders and et cetera. But it, a photograph will only work if the lighting's perfect. So I didn't even bother. But the day we were packing the car, I ran back in. And sure enough, the, the clouds parted, the sun came out, and I set up. There was a cat in the window, and I knew it was an omen from heaven. Uh, if you can, in my opinion, if you can get a cat in a, in a piece, uh, it's a home run. But just when I set up, the cat pushed its way back in to the house. So I boldly walked over, and speaking very little Italian, managed to convince the owner of the, the house to physically push the cat back out onto the windowsill and lock it out there. And I managed to shoot one or two frames before the cat became wildly indignant. And the owner gave in, let it in, and shooed me off. And that piece is called Cat in the Medieval Window. It's one of, my, one of the pieces I'm most proud of. I will attest again to everything that you say characterizes you to a T. You will boldly go up where no man has been before, and you will grab cats and dogs and whatever else, wooden in I don't care what. And as I cower behind trees and, 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 and poor Dan and Chris, I don't know what else, and Fabian is probably in the uh, far reaches of France, uh, you will do exactly that to get whatever picture is necessary. And let's not forget Chris, because when I was in the studio, no person can frame anything quicker than that. I, I could spend my uh, gallery manager Chris I could spend believe for, me I could spend forever trying to put anything together and I'd still be at it now no artist has only one love from what I've uh, I've 
experience and found out what is what is one uh, one other of yours. I, I'm given to understand that uh, there might be music. Uh, actually, I have a tremendous interest in music. And if you've been seeing me fool with a piece of equipment here, it's that we're live and I want you to have a taste of it. But before I get into that, let me tell you what my interest in music lies. Uh, when I was part of my family, my mother's side was from Mississippi. And uh, so as a youngster, we would go down every summer to Mississippi. And I was brought up uh, being exposed to the uh, black blues uh, in the South and happened to be there at the first time that Elvis Presley came out with his first 45, as well as um, uh, the early, um, uh, the very early 45 uh, uh, RPM records that were pressed by many of the early uh, black uh, musicians, Little Richard, um, of course, and James Brown. Uh, I was amazed by the freedom of that kind of music, and, and you know, uh, as I grew up, whenever I could, I would try to get close to that. Being on the west coast of the United States, there wasn't quite as much interest in the roots of black music in, in, uh, uh, in our part of the country. But having had that, I, I looked for it. I can remember going to a concert um, that James Brown had at the uh, Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. And uh, me and a buddy were chauffeured up by my mom and we were part of uh, an absolutely monumental concert that James Brown had. It was tribal. Uh, those of you that have had the fortune of seeing some of his early clips uh, um, are, are, or seeing him l perform live when he was in his younger years, it was the, one of the greatest experiences of my adult life. What I found fascinating about it, and I guess what you could say what would be similar to it's uh, uh, what you'd find consistent in our artwork, is that we look for the essence in a subject. And in blues, what I found fascinating, and, and with regards to the early rock and roll, it was done with one microphone in a, a room, and, and mistakes and all, it was recorded. Now, I play guitar, I play a 1931 uh, national metal guitar. And I'm very fortunate that my partner, Dan Witte, is also a very accomplished musician. Uh, we also play with uh, two others, uh, Bill Marish and Jane Allingham. And I'll give you a little taste of the kind of music we're doing. If the mic will work, I'll hold it up into it. to disseminate down some of the finest early roots of rock, and we're covering that today with one microphone. It's a very exciting thing for us to, to be bringing this forward. And I must add, it's very, I would have to say, somewhat unusual to hear in the background the dobro take a listen to this.
what exactly kind of instrument is the, the doughboy or the whatever it the is? The dobro. Well, the dobro is actually a a guitar which is played flat on a lap, and it's done with a tube over the finger so that it becomes like a pedal steel, but in essence... I've actually seen that in New Orleans. Absolutely. Uh, many times. It, it produces a, a unique, a fabulous kind of feeling in the crowd of, of uh, historical kind of times. Now that recording that you're hearing in the background is done actually uh, with, a, with a single microphone. And you know, the technology of recording now is so fascinating because many very good musicians are getting the light of day because they are recording in their own home studios through computers such as the Apple or through other computer programs through um, um, through all the, the home studios are able to achieve what you used to have to spend a fortune to go into the studio and the other advent, which is quite fascinating, is the Apple, uh, ma uh, the Apple iPod. Now, for those of you, and of course in our demographic, it's, it's uh, uh, something which our demographic really doesn't know typically that much about iPod, but iPod can be used as a recorder as well. We have about a minute left. I want to thank you uh, very much for coming. I want to wish you uh, great success at the Art Expo and the Bellagio and the Venetian and uh, at the L Lugano, Laguna, or whatever it is, <laughs> and La Fiche in California. And I know you've exhibited uh, the Vatican, which work, uh, hangs in our apartment, and, uh, and the next sojourn in Europe. And uh, on your next uh, experience, what is going to be the next tour? Well, our uh, next tour will probably be into a region in central France. A lot of the places we decide to photograph are brought to bear to us by people that come into our shows and will say their grandfather grew up in a place, and that'll give us an idea. So we're on a, we're on a trail, and we'll be in central France into some hill towns and see what we can scour up. Come see us at Art Expo, and look on our website, bigtimeart.com.